Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Chung. Uh, this video today is designed to teach you how to do a shortcut uh, in the use of the ophthalmoscopic exam. Uh, I find that students, residents, and even um, attending physicians find this part of the exam annoyingly difficult because it takes too long to find the optic disc. When you examine with this device without dilating the uh, pupils, you're really only seeing about 5% of the whole uh, eye inside. And of that, for most of us, getting finding that optic disc is the key to the exam. If you don't find the optic disc, you really are wasting your time. So I'd like to show you a little trick that they seem generally not to teach uh, doctors when they learn how to do this. So one of the things, can you come over, over here? The biggest problem that I'm going to just sort of give you a rough demonstration of how it's normally taught. Most uh, doctors are taught to first kind of look for the red reflex from about a foot away and then sort of come in and then, and then kind of try to find the disc by following one of the vessels. secret to this exam is that if you if you have the patient look absolutely straight the optic disc is 15 degrees off the direction of their gaze so if this were 45 this would be about 30 15 degrees is right there so technically if you really knew exactly where that 15 degrees was you could just set this thing right at 15 degrees look inside actually there's a there's the optic disc you'll have to take my word for it but I found the optic disc just like that in about two seconds in my opinion unless they have cataracts or some trouble with their cornea an average time for you to find the disc should be less than five seconds if you can't find the disc in less than five seconds you might find this a very useful tip okay so now when I've taught this to medical students, I find that they make uh, some little errors. If they are looking straight across, you have to be in that same level. So if I'm like too much taller, I'm looking here, looking down, then you won't find it either. So the first thing that you have to do is when you set, when you start looking, you have to actually set down so that you're level. And what I do is knowing that it's 15 degrees off the axis of the gaze, I start at approximately about 30 to 45 degrees and then look inside and then I just kind of rotate in until I hit that 15 degrees. So here's an example of what I do. So I just set it down like this, look inside and just rotate in and right there I see the optic disc. Okay, then I can spend my time looking at the cup, the disc margins, the vessels around there, okay? So that's how simple it is. Um, and you'll be surprised if you just practice it that way. Don't just, and always approach from this side, just kind of rotate in and until you hit the 15 degrees. Since you're approaching from the temporal side, you never hit the fovea so you never blind them with it, and so you won't have this problem. I also find that if you get good at this, I rarely even have to turn the lights down. Like I can see her disc fine with the lights fully, fully on. I know they teach you to turn the lights down and so forth to keep the pupils as large as possible, but if you do this right, it's pretty easy, okay? So another tip that I wanna give you that's a minor tip, but it's useful for the beginners is if you look at the ophthalmoscope, it's got numbers on this one section. And if you turn, if you turn the dial, they're red numbers. Right? You may or may not be able to see the red numbers on the video. And then when you turn it to the other way, they're green numbers. Okay? Now, the red numbers is when you or the patient is nearsighted. Okay? And the green numbers are if they're farsighted. So what I do is, what I do now is, uh, for example, I'm 
uh, mildly nearsighted. So if I wanted to do this exam without my glasses, I set the number at about three, and then I do my exam, and it's in perfect focus. She happens to be 20-20, so she, it's in perfect focus. The trick to do it too is that you can ask the patient, are you mildly nearsighted, moderately nearsighted, or very nearsighted? If they tell you mildly, then I would start with the numbers at minus three. If they say they're moderately nearsighted, I would start it at maybe five, red number is five. And if they're very nearsighted, I might start at around seven. That way, when you do the exam, the disc will be fairly in focus and you don't have to fiddle around with the focus so much because that also takes an excess amount of time. Okay, that's it.